Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you back to a poorly lit impromptu home renovation video on the Spruce Stopper channel. Can you properly frame with screws? Very controversial subject. I'm sure you've come across videos if you've ever searched it. Guys go bananas when they see people framing with screws. And they should, but there's a caveat and I want to get into that just a smidgen. So what we have here is a total gut out of what was an ensuite, a master bath, a huge, huge ensuite. We've put in a wall, so we're gonna create two bathrooms. The powder room, I don't know if that term's relevant anymore, but off the main space, guests, family, friends, you got yourself a toilet, a sink to wash up, and a little bit of storage. And here we have created a plentiful space to become the ensuite off the master bedroom gonna have yourself your custom shower nice custom vanity that fan right there she's got to go and of course obviously a toilet we're getting to that but everything's been framed now bathroom framing is not the same as just framing a brand new house in my opinion there's a lot of things to consider and there's several trades involved I do everything but they're electrical the plumbing we bring in professionals, so they have their opinions, and I'll show you a few things that have already been done, depending on the order that you can get people into your space. Now, you're gonna see wire, you're gonna see pipe, some of it new, some of it existing. Ideally, you get your plumbers in before your electrician, because it's a heck of a lot easier to move a wire or go around a pipe with a wire than vice versa. But in the true nature of renovation and construction, whoop, my screw's in your face, beggars can't be choosers. So this leads me to my point. Can you properly frame with screws and should you? Very common. The downfall is where oh, we, we drag in the poor homeowner. I'm a homeowner. You know, the DIY handyman, the roots run deep. Nothing wrong with homeowners doing their own bits of work. And I encourage it. You should do it. But they go down to the box store and they pick up a shiny, shiny box of yellow construction screws. Why do we do that? Why do folks at home pick up the box of yellow construction screws? Uh, attracted to shiny things like crows, I guess. But we all know the dreaded construction screw is not sheer rated, which means kersnap. It's not meant for framing. And framing with screws, well, in a production atmosphere, if you were doing a major addition, a building, or building a whole house, any amount of serious framing, screws just don't have a place. We're gonna see a tool, like my friend over there, the Milwaukee cordless framing nailer. Once you buy one of those, you'll never go back the other direction. I do not frame bathroom renovations with screws for the speed. I frame it for the convenience of being able to reconfigure and accommodate a lot of mechanical, electrical in a very tight space. And here's what I'm here's what I mean. Here's a space that nine times out of ten is gonna become problematic because you're gonna have several guys with several opinions about what needs to go in this space. This is the end wall of a shower. So that's where your water, your shower head, your controls. Um, in this case, a very beautiful but heavy glass door has to attach. So the framing requirements to meet the needs of everyone in only about 40 inches worth of wall become dramatic. You got your blocking for your shower valve. You got your blocking for your shower head. I need my blocking here for the shower door because in this case, the shower door completely hangs off of that framing on hinges, it's very heavy glass, so it needs to be beefy. But everything has to go in a specific spot, and every I'm having a hard time focusing on the camera, so I apologize. Everyone has their preference. So the plumber, he's gonna have a certain depth that he wants that set back, and yes, please tell me in the comments, oh, it's a standard amount, you need this much for the shower valve, yada, yada, yada. It varies. Different brands, different faucets, different shower valves or different mixing valves require different offsets. So here is what I'm getting to. This is why in a very small bathroom reno, I'm gonna frame it with screws instead of nails because I don't wanna wait around on plumber day, cutting blocking, you can imagine, two 
or three full grown men in a bathroom, very cramped, not a lot of room for running tools. So here's my shower valve blocking. It's already pre-cut, but you can see that. She's loose as a goose, loose as a goose. But the beauty of it is I know where it goes. I already know it fits. And there's just a couple of structural screws holding it in. So he tells me exactly what he wants. And in better yet, what I keep in the old drill kit, Milwaukee Paco, I just keep a bunch of extra Torx bits. So when the electrician, the plumber, or anybody comes around, I say, here you go. I sign them a bit. You hang on to this, put it in your pocket. Uh, don't take it home. Times are tough. Things aren't cheap. And then they can put that shower block exactly where he wants it. Run the screws in. These are GRK uh, number right there. Multi-purpose number nine, three and an eight framing screw. But they're structural, so they're sheer rated. This baby has the same uh, bead. You know, you, you could beat it to death. And it's going to do the same thing a nail does. It bends over. It doesn't break. Structural. Please keep this in mind. If you're doing a bathroom reno and there is a brown screw, a green screw, a gold construction screw, and you have wandered down the wrong aisle up to Home Depot, go somewhere else. So the shower valve is a good example. And then I'll show you, I'll show you a really good space in this particular bathroom reno that you might be glad you use screws instead of nails. This powder room needs a vent. We already pre-planned this. There's a false ceiling. There's lots of room to accommodate the vent until we get over to here. And it has to go up in this space. And you go, well, spruce stomper, you've already bunged up. You got a stud, you got a, a top plate there. There's some electrical. Ah, have I? Again, no, no, we haven't. Because again, that stud, that top plate is just in there with screws. So 30 seconds with the impact driver, zip, zip, out comes the screw. Man, this filming, self-filming without a tripod, Give you a good shoulder workout. Zip, zip, we can take those out. Give the plumber full access to where he needs to go. And I am not wasting time or wasting material. I simply put back what I already know fits and cut because it's all been done and planned ahead of time and screwed down. So let's think of cost because that's the next spot we're gonna go. We've all been down the aisle in the Home Depot and looked at a box, uh, that box of structural screws. I think there's 425 screws in it. It costs a hundred dollars. Well, it costs over a hundred dollars because, uh, you know, big tree, he throws some tax and, uh, well, I mean, that didn't walk here. So I'm sure there's probably a uh, $30 of carbon tax on it. It's a hundred dollars. Well, the amount of nails to frame this bathroom, if you just use framing nails, I mean, probably, you know, I mean, it probably wouldn't even cost 10 or 15 bucks. So, well, there you go. There's your cost right there. You're out, you're out 75, you're out 80 bucks. Wrong. When the plumber is here and the electrician is here, these fellows are charging at over $100 an hour. So the little bit of cost that's tied up in some structural screws does not even remotely hold a candle to me having to get out this horrifying tool. Anybody that loves the Sawzall and they're like, oh, what's your favorite tool? It's a Sawzall. Don't leave that person alone. I don't like that tool. I don't like to get it out, but that's what you'd have to do if this is all nailed together. You're going to come here and he's going to go, oh, you know what? Shower blocking for the shower heads at the wrong height. We have some disagreement. That one's a standard, so it's a bit of a stretch, but maybe it's set the wrong distance in the stud or the plumber doesn't like it. Or over here where we have a lot of electrical going, somebody's put something that needs to be accommodated differently. The screws will allow for very, very simple modification in a small renovation project. So the uh, economics of it, they sway in the favor of the structural screw. Because all I have to do is move one stud and the cost of those screws has been immediately offset. Even in this case of this project where we're doing a lot of work around a lot of logs and stuff like that, things had to be test fit a little bit here and there. Screws in, out. Beautiful. Just beauty. No waste. No garbage. No, we're not making firewood here. You don't need a renovation project that looked like it housed a family of beavers due to the wood chips. So that's my case for yes, you can frame with screws where appropriate. And uh, I'd say in small home renovations, kitchen, bath, it's appropriate. If you're just doing a plain old stud wall, like we have here, just the old 16 inch on center, and you know that there's not gonna be any mechanical wiring or any issue like that. Golden, 
get your nail gun out if it fires you up. You can see, I showed it to you, my nail gun's in here. So a couple nails got driven. It even comes down to the preference of the homeowner because a reno's not done until it's done. We're gonna get this fully roughed in. We're gonna have lights, camera action over here, plumbing, everything's gonna be in. And before it gets bordered, we go through with the client and we give them one last chance to go, are we absolutely sure? These are the lights you want. These are the heights you want. This is where you want towel bar like this. Boys, if you're not putting blocking in for towel bars, grab bars, all sorts of bars, hooks, toilet paper holders, if you are not putting solid blocking in and you're a drywall anchor cowboy, don't don't do that. Don't 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 do that. Put the blocking in. So they come in and say, oh, I don't want a towel bar there no more. I want it moved over here or it interferes with something else, or I want to hang a 700 pound mirror on the wall. You can simply take the blocking, move the screws and rock and roll. Cause let's face it, at the rate that uh, trades are charging out by the hour, time is of the essence. So the box of structural screws, what don't really matter. Now let's face it, there's 425 of them in there. And uh, if it takes you 425 screws to frame a bathroom, may you take up something like knitting anyhow. I don't know what the, anyhow, I don't know what the next adventure is going to be. I'd show you around this project a bit more, but there's not nothing, there's not too much too sassy to see at this point in time. It's hard to film in a bathroom, cramped quarters, no lights because, uh, well, we cut the power and uh, underneath that blue tape, well, some very nice recessed LED slims going in. So once we're back and bright, maybe I'll show you a little bit more of this project. But anyways, Remember, fellas, don't let anybody tell you you can't frame something with screws. Definitely don't let them call you a hack and educate them on the wizardry and power of the structural screw. I don't know what order the adventures are going to come at us. All I know is there is going to be another adventure, and I'll do my best to try and train the eye on the camera. I'll catch you on the next one.